141, who speaks first the live example of Wang Hailong's group lent credibility to Chin Ji's words. This is the first time I've heard of a haunted house being delineated into levels, but Boss explanation is indeed professional. I know it is for our own good, but I still wish to try the scariest scenario. The visitors talked among themselves before accepting the new rules. Chin Gu sighed in relief and led Wang Hailong's group to the spot where the medical students had once fainted. How are you feeling? Shall we call the doctor? Thanks, but we're feeling much better. The one who spoke was Wang Hailong. His lips were purple, and his face was white. His eyes were unfocused, and they were covered with a film of mist. At least you're conscious enough to speak, so you're indeed all right. Chin Gu squatted down beside Wang Hailong. Actually, you're lucky. The last person who tried this scenario is still in the hospital. Brother Long flashed a bitter smile. Are you trying to console me? I'm just telling you the truth. Chen Gu took the name tags away from them and turned to tell Uncle Su, let's go. Looking at this familiar scene, Uncle Su was considering building a rest stop beside the haunted house. Making the visitors keep lying on the floor was not good for the park's image. He was quite angry initially, however, after listening to Chen Ji's explanation, he felt the young man had a point. With the separation of levels, the cases of fainting visitors would decrease. After examining Wang Hailong's condition personally and making sure they were all right, he followed Chen Gu. Xiao Chen, did you plan this beforehand? Are you sure you want to separate the scenarios into levels? This will increase the haunted house's overall income, but have you considered it might lose some potential customers? This must happen. Chin Gu stood firm on his position. I've explained why I'm doing this. This is a protective measure for the visitors. There will be more scenarios in the future, and some of them might be too much for normal visitors. Since you know they might be too much, why don't you edit them? After all, the aim is to serve the majority of people. Uncle Su's argument was not wrong, it was just a little conservative. Some things can't be edited. You'll understand in the future. Chin Gu walked for a while before remembering something. Uncle Su, do we have any extra surveillance devices in the park storage? We have some spare ones, but not many. Why? I wish to borrow a few to install them in the underground parking lot. The new scenario currently has no surveillance, and I don't feel that good about it. Borrow the surveillance devices? Just what kind of person can come up with something like that? Uncle Sue shrugged. Lending them is impossible, but selling them to you at a second-hand price is doable. However, I cannot touch anything in storage without permission. I'll go ask Director Luo this afternoon. Your haunted house has the potential to be this park's top attraction, so I believe he will agree. The two return to the haunted house. Uncle Su continued to sell tickets while Chin Gu replaced all the name tags before entering the murder by midnight scenario to act as the murderer. There were a few groups who challenged Mu Yang High School, but most of them did not even dare enter the sealed classroom. Mu Yang High School did not have a steel door but only wooden boards as entrance, so if the visitors were afraid, they could leave at any moment. There were not many who were as courageous as Wang Hailong's group, so there were no further accidents. During the lunch break, Chin Gu removed the outfit and walked out of the haunted house. Wang Hailong and his brother were walking toward him. Why are you two still here? Want to give it a second go? Chin Gu was only joking, but the siblings shook their heads vehemently. No, not that. He acted rashly this morning. I hope you don't mind. Your tone is completely different from before. Tell me, what do you want? Chin Gu was not someone who had just entered society. Wang Hailong, who was normally so direct, appeared so bashful suddenly. Actually, Wen Long and I have a younger brother called Wang Sheng Long. Before he was five, he was just like any other kid, very playful. However, for some reason, when he turned five, he suddenly went mute. He refused to speak. Our father has tried many ways going to the doctors, even visiting fortune tellers, but none worked. What is your point exactly? Chin Gu was confused about why a five-year-old would suddenly turn mute and what that had to do with him. 
Long story short. Wang Hailong made sure no one was eavesdropping before he leaned in toward Chim Gu. Boss, I saw a scary girl in your haunted house earlier. She was hanging behind my back, her feet stepping on my shoulders. This scenario was exactly the same as my little brother's description of the night before the strange thing happened to him. Wang Wenlong leaned in as well. It's true. That night, the three of us were sleeping in the same room. After midnight, our little brother suddenly sat up in bed, saying someone was standing on his shoulders, begging us to move the person away. At the time, we thought he was toying with us, but the next morning, he had forgotten how to speak. He could make sounds but could not finish complete sentences. Wang Hailong touched his shoulder and continued in shaking voice. Since he lost his voice, we had him write down what he wanted to say. The thing he wrote was, scary to say the least. He saw someone outside the walls the previous night, and the person was staring at him. For some reason, the person then entered the house. That's scary. Chen Gu had experienced worse. When we were young, we stayed at a village. The walls were 2.5 meters tall. If there was really someone staring at him from the wall, the person had to be at least 2.6 meters tall. Is that even a person anymore? That's the point. Wang Hailong tried to explain it. The scariest thing was that the person entered the house easily and asked our little brother to play with him. If he rejected, then he would take something away from him. Did your brother reject the person? His voice was taken away. Then good guessed. No, it's not that. My little brother agreed to play. The game they played is called, Who Speaks First? After my little brother nodded, the monster climbed on my little brother's shoulders, and it became even taller. Chapter 142, All Roads Lead to the Same Place It did not sound that scary on paper, but upon closer inspection, it was quite creepy. The monster climbed on top of your little brother's shoulders, and it grew taller. Jim Gu could not picture a 2.6 meter tall person standing on top of a child's shoulders. That is what our little brother wrote. We even asked him to draw a picture, and he did. Wang Hailong took out his phone. This is the picture he drew from memory when we took him to the doctor last time. Chin Gu glanced at the phone. It was a weird picture. At the bottom of the picture, there was a fat and short child. He took up about a tenth of the paper. The other 90% was dominated by the weird thing on his shoulders. What is this? Chin Gu looked at the thing on the child's shoulder. It looked like a woman with unruly hair, but the body looked male. Very skinny, like two bamboo poles covered with a white cloth. Did you recognize it? I saw something similar in your haunted house. There was a girl who stood on people's shoulders, and at the time, I was reminded of my little brother's story. Wang Hailong took back his phone. He glanced at the haunted house and residual fear pooled in his eyes. Since you created this scenario, you have to have experienced something similar. Also, when the girl was stepping on my shoulders, it felt very real. If not for my sanity, I would have thought I'd run into a real ghost. Our haunted house utilizes the latest 4D technology and special techniques to stimulate the customer's five senses. That was why you felt something on your shoulders. Chen Gu lied shamelessly. The whole standing on the shoulders thing is just a coincidence. Fine. But Wang Hailong did not give up. Then, can you tell me what it is that inspired you to create such a scene? This Wang Hailong was a stubborn fellow. Chen Gu thought about it and said, There are no ghosts in this world. Those are all part of human imagination. I know that you are worried about your little brother, but I'm not even a doctor. Instead of asking me, why don't you consult a psychologist? In fact, I can recommend one. Park could close in another two months, so Chun Gu did not want to waste time on unimportant stuff. He was also doing this for Wang Hailong's brother's sake. After all, he had no official psychological training, so it would be better if this was handled by a professional. My dad has taken him to psychologists since he was young. In fact, there was a mental hospital beside our old house, and my little brother was admitted for a period of time, but the effect was lacking. Wang Hailong hesitated. 
Brother, let me. Wang Wan Long held his brother. For some weird reason, our little brother has a weird aversion toward doctors. He screams and struggles or even turns violent when he is near people in a doctor's garb. Because of this, we have to notify the doctors beforehand whenever we visit a new doctor. Aversion to doctors? Chen Gu found the second anomaly about Wang Hailong's brother. Could it be that the thing on your brother's shoulders is afraid of doctors? So it harms the boy whenever a doctor is near? We do not know the actual reason. Before he was admitted to the hospital next door, he was fine, but after he was released from it, he started to get afraid of doctors, Wang Wenlong added. This was a secret they had shared for years. The sudden change must have a reason. Chen Gu tried to help them by analyzing what he knew. Could it be that something the doctor did during his treatment scarred him for life? That's impossible. Sheng Long was very young when he sought treatment at the hospital, so the family was at his side at all times. The doctors treated him well. Since it's not the doctors, then perhaps it might have been the environment. Perhaps you can return to this old hospital, maybe you can find some clues there. Chen Gu gave his suggestion and then turned to leave for lunch. The hospital closed down a long time ago. The third hospital building Sheng Long stayed at is now completely sealed, so we cannot gain entry even if we want to. Wang Hai Long sighed. I'm sorry to unload all this on you. Too many things happened today that reminded us of our little brother. The third building? Due to the Black Phone's mission, Chen Gu was very sensitive toward the word third. What is this hospital? It was the hospital next to our old house. It was in the next district. We were poor back then, so we could only afford that place. After things got better, we transferred him to another hospital. That's not what I meant. What is the name of this hospital? Chen Ji's eyes that looked at Wang Hai Long were rather scary. Jiujian Third Psychological Convalescent Center, commonly known as Third Center. If I'm not mistaken, it has been abandoned for five or six years already. Wang Hailong and his brother could not understand this change in Chen Gu. Is there a place called the Third Sick Hall at this center? Chen Gu was lining up the dots in his mind. That's what you meant. Some referred to the third building my little brother once stayed in as the Third Sick Hall. They are the same place, just different names. I understand. Chen Gu took in a deep breath. I know the best doctor in Jiujiang. If possible, can you bring me to meet your little brother tonight? Afraid that he might be rejected, Chen Gu immediately started to toot Dr. Gao's horn. No problem, but you have to be prepared, my little brother is. How shall I put this? Is not that normal looking? Wang Hailong forced a smile. If the doctor you mentioned is coming along, remind him to wear casually. Then, he pulled out a black name card from his pocket. On the front, it was written, Long Hu Fong Wan. Who are, looking at the uniquely designed name card and the tattoos that covered their body, it finally dawned on Chen Gu. Are these gang members? This was the first time Chen Gu had interacted with such individuals in his life. Noticing the shock on Chen Ji's face, Wang Hai Long whispered, It is as you thought. Long Hu Fong Sichuan Steamboat is owned by my family. The contact number is on the back of the card. Chen Gu flashed a bright smile as he accepted the card. Do you have a more specific address? Come to the old district's Hai Ming apartments tonight. Xin Long and my father stay there. Chapter 143 Three personas when Wang Hai Long mentioned the name of the location, Chen Gu was stunned. Are the Hai Ming apartments that you mentioned situated in the deepest part of a residential area? With rubbish piling up outside and a very old-looking building? This time, it was Wang Hailong and Wen Long who were shocked. You've been there? I just came back from the place the night before yesterday. Chen Gu also did not think things could be so coincidental. Nice, this means that you know the way there. We're going there tonight. My father has a stubborn disposition, so it will be better for us to meet up downstairs first before going up together. After drafting the plan, the brothers left. Wang Xinglong's old home is next to the third sick hall. The monster he saw that night have escaped from the hospital? After he was admitted into the third sick hall, 
this problem deteriorated. Everything seems to lead back to the mental hospital. Chen Gu watched as the pair of brothers walked away. There's a monster that came out of the third sick hall residing in Wang Haiming, and there appears to be another monster in Wang Xinglong, and they both chose to live at Haiming apartments. Suddenly, Chen Gu was reminded of the words mentioned by the young man in room 302. He had once overhead the two voices in Wang Haiming argue, and one of them said that if he was not afraid of being captured by the Red Spectre, he would have killed the other entity already. Could the thing that the monster in Wang Haiming was afraid of be the monster within Wang Xinglong? If that is true, doesn't it mean the monster in Wang Xinglong is on the same level as Zhang Ya? Wang Xinglong is the scariest entity at Haiming Apartments? This question was too complicated. Chen Gu skipped lunch and sat on the steps before the haunted house to think. The monster on Wang Haiming had been afraid of tearing away from Wang Haiming because it had felt something. It had forced the young man in room 302 to capture living creatures it, starting from the initial sparrows, stray dogs, and finally a living human. It slowly broadened its appetite as if feeling out the bottom line of a certain presence. It was similar to the mirror monster but the one at Shin Ji's haunted house had acted so brashly. In comparison, the monster at Hai Ming apartment was cautious. Obviously, the monster was afraid, so from this hypothesis, even if the monster on Wang Xinglong was not a red specter, it was much stronger than normal ghosts. Just how scary is this third sick hall? There's a presence much stronger than the mirror monster, and from the looks of things, these were the two that escaped. There are probably more monsters sealed in that place. Chen Gu rubbed his temples. A three-star scenario is already like this. Just how scary will the four-star school of the afterlife be? Standing up, Chen Gu gave Dr. Gao a call. He was unsure whether Dr. Gao was free or not, but if the doctor was too busy, he decided that he would go alone. The call was picked up after two rings, and Dr. Gao said, Chen Gu, how can I help you? It's nothing really. I'm just calling to ask about Men Man. How is he doing? After a day of rest, he is getting better, but his condition is not that optimistic. In fact, I fear his situation is worse than I expected. Dr. Gao sounded severe on the phone. That shouldn't be. Chin Gu was confused. He had already helped Men Nan solve the issue in his heart. He had completed the mission given by the Black Phone, so his condition should have improved. Listen to me, after Men Nan woke up, I reinitiated another psychological diagnosis, and I happened upon a startling discovery. Dr. Gao paused, and it sounded like he was walking over to a more private area before continuing. There are three personas hiding in Men Nan's body. One is a growing persona, which is the normal Men Nan we see daily. Another persona he has adopted is his dead mother. This persona sees herself as Men Nan's mother. I suspect the appearance of this persona is a method of self-defense created by Men Nan's consciousness after witnessing his mother's murder at a young age. What about the third? The period of appearance for this third persona is very short, so we still don't have much information on him. The only thing that I can confirm is that he does exist. This persona is unique. He will not grow, staying stasis at the age when Men Nan was still a child. I cannot communicate with him, and he shows up only for a short period of time. However, whenever this persona takes control of the body, Men Nan's acumen for psychology doubles. Meaning Men Nan's talent is related to this third persona? Yes, I've not come across a more talented person. Dr. Gao had high praise for Men Nan. However, the need to preserve his talent means that the process of recovery will be very difficult. Normal medication will strengthen his normal persona and weaken the others. I'm afraid this will ruin his talent, so I'm discussing his case with other experts. Hopefully, we'll be able to come up with a treatment specifically designed for Men Nan. When he was cured, his talent would also disappear. It was unknown whether this was a good or bad thing for Men Nan. Since Dr. Gao sounded so busy on the phone, Chen Gu did not bring up Wang Xinglong. He did not want to bother the good doctor anymore. All right, hopefully Men Nan will have a speedy recovery. Bye. When he was about to hang up, Dr. Gao said, Wait, you must have called me for a reason. 
Ben Man is currently too weak to undergo any psychological treatment, so I am not that busy at the moment. If you have a problem, feel free to ask me. Since Dr. Gao had said so, Chen Gu did not hold back and told him everything he knew about Wang Xinglong. Dr. Gao was silent before saying, Okay, I will come with you tonight. After all, Men Nan's daily effects are still in Hai Ming apartments. I have been meaning to find time to go fetch him for him. Thank you, Dr. Gao. There's no need for thanks. I've heard all about you from Ru Shua. As a psychology aficionado, you are more than willing to put your knowledge into practice to help others. Be honest, you make me feel ashamed of myself. Psychology aficionado? That's what Gao Ru Shua said about me. Chen Gu did not know whether to laugh or cry. He had a feeling that the other party had misunderstood him somewhat. Your haunted house makes use of many psychological tricks, and it shows you have been reading up on psychology. Dr. Gao laughed. If there's a chance, I shall pay it a visit. You flatter me. Chen Gu wiped the sweat off his forehead. The thought of placing the suit wearing Dr. Gao in his haunted house to scare for half an hour spooked Chen Gu. His whole characterization would collapse after something like that. Dr. Gao's voice soon returned to normal. There are plenty who self-study psychology, but there aren't many who are willing to do something for the patients. You have helped Wang Xian with her problem, and to be honest, when you called me to ask for help, I was touched. Only those who have experienced psychological trauma will understand the pain involved. Actually, I've been trying to thank you on behalf of Wang Xian and Men Nan. It is because of you that they were able to break free from their psychological shackles and breathe a breath of fresh air. Chen Gu was praised so much by Dr. Gao that he did not even remember ending the call. After all, this was the first time someone had praised him thusly. Chen Gu realized then that he was quite a noble person. Chapter 144 We Are All Monsters 1. After lunch, Chen Gu returned to the staff break room. When he opened the door, he saw Su Wan squatting by the door. What are you doing? Boss, when did you get this cat? It's so pretty, but it doesn't let me touch it. Su Wan grumbled, I just want to give it a hug. Don't think about it. The cat is a stray and is hostile toward human. Chen Gu entered the room and placed the boards back. When the cat saw Chen Gu, it did not hiss angrily, but it did jump away like it did not want to be physically close to him. Then why isn't the cat hostile toward you? Su Wan was confused. Never she neared the cat, it would assume a hostile posture. Perhaps it knows I'm a trustworthy, noble person. Sitting on the bed, Chen Gu stretched lazily. Do you want to take a rest? It's all right. You can take a short nap, I'll wake you at 1.15 p.m. Su Wan looked at the white cat with captivated eyes. By the way, what is its name? I've tried giving it many names, but it didn't like any of them. I called it White Tiger, it was weirdly responsive, so I'm considering calling it White Tiger from now on. Chen Gu looked at the white cat and considered it seriously. You want to call a cat White Tiger? Su Wan thought that Chen Gu was kidding with her, but he didn't look like it. Well, as long as you're happy. After Su Wan left, Chen Gu continued to study the white cat on the chair. This cat could see those monsters, and even a baleful specter like Xiao Xiao was afraid of it. If he could make use of it, this cat could be a useful trump card for Chen Gu, but it was a living creature with its own consciousness. However, making it obedient to Chen Ji's orders would take some time. At least after a night of interaction, the cat was no longer that hostile toward Chen Gu. The cat was clever. It knew who was good and who was bad. Your kittens are no longer with us. Even if you continue to guard them, nothing will change. Chen Gu thought about it and stood up to grab the basket. The white cat followed behind him, and the pair walked out the haunted house. Chen Gu used his hands to dig up a hole next to a tall tree. Then, he placed the kittens within. When he did those things, he kept an eye on the white cat, afraid that it might suddenly become frenzied. I understand your pain and know how important they are to you, but you have to understand. Chen Gu squatted on the floor and slowly filled up the hole. Everything dies, 
and when it does, it is returned to nature. Only by burying them can their souls return to the great cycle. He did not know whether the white cat understood him or not, but the cat kept watching the mound of dirt. Staring at the four kittens that slowly disappeared from view, its pair of different colored eyes danced slightly. It did not attack Chingu or lose its rationality, it just sat there quietly. When Chingu dropped in the last handful of dirt, the white cat hid inside a tree hole. No matter how hard Chingu tried to get its attention, there was no response. Lunch break was soon over, and the visitors returned. It was then that the white cat left the hole, but it just jumped higher into the tree's canopy. Chingu could not force the cat to do something it did not want to, so after a quick cleaning, he opened the haunted house for business. With the new two-star scenario, many visitors instantly lined up again after experiencing murder by midnight or Minghan scenarios. The effect of the level delineation had slowly come into play. The greater the limitation, the more they wanted to try it. For thrill-seekers, the unknown scenario had an unparalleled attraction. Chin Gu was busy until New Century Park closed. Before he had a chance to rest, Chin Gu followed Uncle Su to the park storage to retrieve the surveillance devices. He told Su Wan and Uncle Su to leave first before entering Mu Yang High School alone. He installed the camera at few key locations. Installation took longer than Chin Gu expected. When he was finished, it was already 8 p.m. After washing his face, Chin Gu called Dr. Gao and Wang Hai Long before taking a taxi to Hai Ming Apartments. When he arrived, Dr. Gao and Wang Hai Long were already there. The steady Dr. Gao, who had a deep appreciation and understanding of psychology, easily won over the affection of the Wang brothers. Without the introduction from Chin Gu, they were already happily chatting among themselves. My dad and Xing Long live on the sixth floor. I've informed them of our visit this afternoon. When the three entered Hai Ming apartments, Chin Gu frowned slightly. That stench had returned. This stench was heaviest when they passed the third floor, but the others did not seem to smell it. They acted normally, discussing Wang Xinglong's condition. What is the source of this smell? Initially, Chin Gu thought it was the bag of animal bodies from room 302, but those carcasses should have been taken care of by now, so how come the stench still remained? They reached the top floor and Wang Hailong knocked on the door for room 601. It was a man in his fifties who answered the door. He had peppery hair and a deep frown on his face. Dad, this is the haunted house boss who experienced something similar, and this is the best psychologist in Zhejiang. Please, come in. There were many everyday items in the room. The room was not designed to fit that many people, and it appeared a bit small. I had been told of your intention. Xin Long is inside the bedroom. If you can cure his illness, you will not worry for your financial future anymore. This old father looked far more ancient than his actual age. Can we meet Xin Long? Qin Gu stood at the very back. When the door was opened, the stench hit him like a wall, but weirdly enough, none of the others reacted in any way to it. It appeared that only he could smell the stench. Okay, but I hope you are mentally prepared. Wang Xinglong's father pushed the bedroom door open. A stronger stench wafted out from the room, and Xin Gu rested his finger surreptitiously on the tip of his nose. It was not smelly per se, but it was a smell that made him feel uncomfortable. He instinctually wanted to escape when the smell hit him. The smell was like a voice telling him, Do not get close, this thing is dangerous. Looking through the bedroom door, the small bedroom did not have any furniture just a thin carpet covering the floor and several pillows in the corners. Other than these, the most eye-grabbing feature was the person who sat in the middle of the room. He was a squat person, perhaps only about 1.5 meters tall, and incredibly overweight. His legs were misshapen from the pressure, and he looked more like a meatball than a man. When he saw people walk in, the man grinned harmlessly at the door and raised his hand with difficulty in an attempt to wave. Whenever a new outsider saw Wang Xinglong, his father's heart felt like it was slashed by a knife. Xinglong doesn't know how to speak, but his other faculties are totally normal. Ask him anything, and he will answer by writing on the board. Chapter 145 
We are all monsters, too. Wang Xinglong's father observed Shen Gu and Dr. Gao out of the corner of his eyes. He knew how unusual his son looked, and whenever someone judged his child with a weird gaze, there was an indescribable pain in his heart. However, this time was different. Both Dr. Gao and Shen Gu acted normally. Exercise can help stave away heart problems and release stress. Try not to keep him cooped up at home. Dr. Gao removed his shoes and stepped into the room. He sat down beside Wang Xinglong without a trace of disgust or condescension. Wang Xinglong did not show fear at Dr. Gao's approach. If anything, it felt like he wanted the company. He wiggled his large body with difficulty like he was trying his best to show his welcome. Wang Xinglong and Dr. Gao shared a peaceful relationship, but when Shen Gu prepared to enter the bedroom, everything changed. He followed Dr. Gao and removed his shoes, but when he stepped into the bedroom, the smiling Wang Xinglong suddenly stopped. His expression turned serious. He glared at Shen Gu, and it felt like he was a lion who felt some other dangerous beast entering his territory. Dr. Gao, who was sat beside Wang Xinglong, felt this most directly. He looked at Chin Gu with confusion. Chin Gu himself felt this. Wang Xinglong's reaction was abnormal to his eyes. What did the man sense on me? Is it the residual smell of the stray cat, or can the monster on him sense the presence of Zhang Ya? Chin Gu stopped moving and took a seat further away from Wang Xinglong. Perhaps it's the sudden influx of strangers that has unsettled him. Dr. Gao tried to smooth over the situation and started chatting with Wang Xinglong. He was a professional. He did not bring up anything related to mental disease. It felt like he was merely chatting with a friend, and Wang Xinglong slowly relaxed, using the board to respond to Dr. Gao's occasional questions. Chen Gu did not say a word, and he focused fully on listening. Dr. Gao was tactful with his speech. It might have seemed like small talk, but unconsciously, he had drawn out many secrets from Wang Xinglong including the darkest memory from his childhood and his daily habits as well as his history with doctors. Conversation continued for 40 minutes, and the longer the conversation went on, the more Dr. Gao felt this was not a psychological patient. Wang Xinglong's mind was clear and bright. He was willing to communicate with others and showed desire to receive treatment. Listening to their conversation, Wang Xinglong's family was gratified. Despite his looks, they knew Wang Xinglong was a kind and harmless child. After the conversation ended, Dr. Gao exited the bedroom. He pulled Wang Xinglong's father to the side to ask, the child acts very normally. It doesn't seem like he is tormented by psychological illness. I can't help but suspect he is hiding something from me. Mental patients, for the most parts, were like normal human beings. It was only when their illness acted up that they would commit actions that normal people would not understand. The child has never hurt anyone and has not done anything weird. Other than the refusal to speak and move, he is just like a normal person. Wang Xinglong's father fetched a glass of water for Dr. Gao. When Dr. Gao conversed with Wang Xinglong, the latter had told him about the childhood nightmare. A normal child suddenly lost his power to speak. Could the story he was telling be real? Wang Xinglong's father shook his head with a sigh. We have no idea whether it's real or not. We've seen so many doctors, but none of them could confirm or deny it. Whether it's real or not is not that important. The important part is even after so many years, Xinglong can still recount it in such detail. This means that the incident has impacted him greatly. As long as we can solve this problem, he should be able to regain the ability to speak. But if this incident is completely made up, how are we supposed to help him solve it? Wang Hailong asked. Even if it is fictional, every single detail and it has a real meaning to Xun Long, just like how dreams often reflect real life. Dr. Gao took out his phone to show that he had recorded his conversation with Wang Xun Long. We cannot take everything at a surface level. Temporarily, I cannot promise you anything, but I will try my best. Dr. Gao as long as you can cure Shen Long. I don't have much confidence either. After all, his language power must have regressed since he hasn't spoken for so many years. Dr. Gao looked back into the bedroom. But the most stressing issue is not his psychological problem but his physical issue. 
He is seriously overweight, and this puts his life in danger. You have talked to him about this, but he dislikes exercise. He prefers to just stay inside his bedroom. He doesn't even want to move out to the living room. Long Xinglong's father was also frustrated. Try to communicate with him and tell him that this is normal to change his worldview and perspective. Then his action might change. Dr. Gao discussed the situation with Wang Xinglong's family outside the bedroom. Inside the bedroom, Chen Gu sat across from Wang Xinglong. By then, the smile on Wang Xinglong's face had disappeared. His beady eyes that almost disappeared among his folds of fat narrowed into slits as he studied Chen Gu. Wang Xinglong, I want to help you, so I hope you will stop hiding things from me. Chen Gu maintained a safe distance from Wang Xinglong. The man was very cautious of Chen Gu, and Chen Gu refused to get any closer because of the stench that came off the man. However, it appeared like only Chen Gu could smell it. Grabbing the board, Wang Xinglong wrote, I'm not hiding anything, I've told you everything. You know whether that is true or not. Chen Gu lowered his voice. Your focus is on why you aren't talking, but I'm different. I'm more curious about the other memory that you most detest. What happened to you when you were inside the third sick hall? The mention of the third sick hall caused the flesh on Wang Xinglong's face to shake violently. His chubby hands clenched into fist, and his body shook unevenly. Your aversion to doctors occurred after you left the third sick hall, so what happened to you inside that hospital? Chen Gu held Wang Xinglong's fists. You are a normal person, but you are under the threat of something abnormal. Tell me the truth, I can help you. Wang Xinglong rejected Chen Ji's offer. He suddenly went berserk and shoved Chen Gu away with powerful force. Catching his breath, Wang Xinglong glared at Chen Gu. After a long time, he wrote this down on the board. You have both transformed into monsters. Instead of worrying about me, you'd better worry about yourself. Chapter 146 Livestream Time confirmed the smile on Wang Xinglong's face had long since disappeared. He rubbed the words off the board and pain flashed across his beady eyes. We have both transformed into monsters. Chen Gu knocked into the door, and pain radiated from his back. Hearing the commotion in the bedroom, Dr. Gao and Wang Xinglong's family ran in. Chen Gu, what happened? I accidentally slipped and knocked into the door. Chen Gu rubbed his back as he stood up. Is it serious? I have some ointment somewhere. Wang Xinglong's father did not doubt Chen Gu, and he turned back into the living room to go look for the ointment. However, Dr. Gao seemed to have noticed something. His eyes scanned the unruffled carpet but did not say anything. It's all right, not so serious. Dr. Gao helped Chen Gu up. They left the bedroom together. Things were not going as smooth as he had hoped. Wang Xinglong had hidden the biggest secret from everyone else. He seemed to be cooperative on the surface, but that was merely a ploy to distract everyone away from the real cause of his illness. But why would Wang Xinglong do that? He has his own difficulty. Chen Gu remembered the expression on Wang Xinglong's face when he wrote down that sentence. It was filled with helplessness and pain, but the key problem was that he did not seem to want to change. Chen Gu moved his shoulders and realized that Wang Xinglong was actually more powerful than most adults. He looks innocent but is actually very dangerous. Wang Xinglong did not want to tell the truth, and Chen Gu could not force him before his father and brothers. Even if he did decide on force, Chen Gu had no confidence that he could overpower Wang Xinglong. In the end, Chen Gu asked Dr. Gao if they could leave. He wanted to ask Dr. Gao to discover the secret Wang Xinglong was hiding. Wang Xinglong's father walked them to the door. When they were leaving each other with their contact information, through the open bedroom door, Chen Gu saw that the devastated Wang Xinglong had picked up the board again. He seemed to know that Chen Gu was watching him. He drew quickly and turned the board towards the open door. What was he drawing? Few small people were sitting inside the house. The smallest among them had a monster standing on his shoulders. The monster had its back bent as it surveyed its surroundings, like it was prepared to jump onto other people. Is he trying to give me a hint? Chen Gu memorized the drawing and left the apartment with Dr. Gao. When they left, 
They went down to room 304 to grab Man Nan's stuff. Chin Gu closed the door and after making sure the Wang brothers didn't follow them, he opened his lips to ask, Dr. Gao, do you think Wang Sheng Long has a big problem? He is indeed a bit not normal. Dr. Gao placed Men Nan's sheets and pillows in the middle of his quilt and rolled them up. According to Wang Xinglong's father, his condition should be very serious, but from my initial diagnosis, the man is fine. He has an open, clear, and logical mind. However, this contrasted greatly with the blank smile on the man's face. A normal person would have the ability to control the expression on his face. I am sure he is hiding something from me. This patient is very smart and is an expert at hiding his feelings, but he is being too obvious about it. Chen Gu was surprised Dr. Gao had spotted it as well. After all, you're the professional, but since you have noticed that, why didn't you tell his father? Wouldn't that help with the treatment? How to navigate the relationship between the doctor and the patient's family is a complicated skill. Wang Xinglong's father might have been kind to us today, but if anything happened to his son, he would definitely be on his son's side, and he would block our access to Wang Xinglong in the future. Dr. Gao pick her up the bundle to carry out of the room. Come and help me. Grab the books and notes in Men Nan's drawer and place them in the box. They are very important to him. Chin Gu entered the bedroom and took out the books one by one from the drawer. When the drawer was almost empty, Chin Gu saw a picture sat at the bottom of the drawer. A woman was lying in a hospital bed with a patient's garb. Shy-looking boy sat beside her. Is this a picture of Men Nan and his mother? Looking at the picture, Chin Gu was shocked. Men Nan's mother in the picture, even though she had no makeup on, was incredibly beautiful. Men Nan's father still had an affair even though he had such a beautiful wife. Chen Ji's first love letter in his life came from a baleful specter, so he did no know much about romantic relationships. He felt perhaps something was not right about Men Nan's father. After placing the picture in one of the books, Chen Gu placed all the books in the box and left room 304 with Dr. Gao. After exiting Hai Ming apartments, Chen Gu took a deep breath. Finally, don't need to take in that stench anymore. Stench? If you're talking about stench, isn't it stronger out here? Dr. Gao asked as he pointed at the rubbish that piled as high as small hill. Didn't you smell a weird stench in Wang Xinglong's room? No, his house is very clean. The old father has taken good care of him. Dr. Gao sighed. Actually, the child can be considered lucky. Least he has his family support, and they all wish for him to get better. His family is indeed very kind. Worry between family members could not be faked, and Chin Gu could feel that. He took a few steps before stopping suddenly. Family? Yes, some patients' family dropped them at the rehabilitation center and left them there. Dr. Gao had misunderstood Chin Gu. He was thinking about another issue. In Wang Xinglong's last drawing, there were a few small people sitting in the drawing. The one with the monster standing on the shoulder seemed to refer to himself, so the people around him should have been his family. The monster was prepared to jump to other people, so could this be why Wang Xinglong refused to seek treatment? If he did anything wrong, the monster might harm his family. Wang Xinglong's drawing also proved that even after so many years, the two-meter-tall monster was still standing on his shoulders, and their game was still ongoing. Stench should originate from the monster, but why only I can smell it? After solving the first problem, more problems surfaced. Jin Gu realized that he would need to enter the third sick hall to answer all the questions. After placing all of Men Nan's stuff in the trunk, Dr. Gao drove Chin Gu back to New Century Park. When his feet stood on firm ground, Chin Gu received a call from Lu Dao. Brother, Qin Guang's next live stream schedule has been announced. It's tomorrow night. So soon. Then do you know where the location will be? Mu Yan High School. Lu Dao mentioned a familiar name. However, this time, Qin Guang has learned his lesson. He hired someone to write a script based on your live stream, so he can now be considered paying homage and not plagiarizing, so even the platform cannot do anything to him. Chin Gu was silent for a long time, so Lu Dao thought that he was angry. Certain things are helpless, but as long as we work hard, 
It'll be fine. It's not that, but if you have the chance, please help me send a message to Qin Guang. A message? Qin Gu looked at the haunted house in the dark. Tell him to stop following me. If he does not, I have no guarantee what will happen to him. Chapter 147 The Approval of the White Cat Are you serious? That sounds like a threat. Lu Dao did not think that Qin Gu was kidding. He did not know Qin Gu that well, but he did know that the man was a bit different from normal. No, it's sincere advice. Just tell him what I said. Qin Ji's voice was calm. He was already praising himself for how kind-hearted he was. At the end of the day, we are merely competitors. Even though he is rather shameless, I do not want to see him walk toward his death. Furthermore, his live stream involves such a large crew. They are innocent lives, so he should think about them. Competitor? Death? Innocent lives? Are we talking about the same topic? Lu Dao felt like one of them was drunk. Tell Qin Guang that if he continued to copy Qin Gu, he would die. How was he going to say that? Qin Gu, I know you are angry, but please calm down. We can use our content to surpass him. There is no need to rely on threats. If anything, this might make them sue us. Lu Dao tried to advise him. After all, the contract had been signed, and their first official cooperation began tomorrow, so he did not want Shin Gu to do anything stupid at such a crucial moment. You will not understand even if I explain it to you. Shin Gu walked to his haunted house. If there's nothing else, I'll see you tomorrow afternoon. Remember to come early. There are many details we wish to discuss with you. You got it. After hanging up, Chen Gu was feeling low. He did not think that the live stream was that important, be it Qin Guang or the popularity, those were added bonuses. He only cared about one thing, which was to survive and find the clues left behind by his parents. Chen Gu glanced toward the canopy of the tree next to the haunted house, but the white cat was nowhere to be seen. Eventually, it has left. Chen Gu had grown quite attached to that cat. Multicolored eyes are not common for a stray, but it is still a life. Things can't be forced. Tim Gu was rather saddened upon realizing that the white cat had left. He entered the haunted house and found himself alone in the long corridor. Haunted house was rather lifeless at night. He switched on the corridor lights, and his lonely shadow extended down the corridor. It looked quite lonely, but he had gotten used to this already. He went into the bathroom to wash his face before turning toward the staff break room. Before entering, he noticed something weird. Why is the break room door open? There were two sets of keys to the break room. He carried one on himself, and the other was hidden above the door frame. It was to make it convenient for other haunted house workers. This hiding place was only known to those who had worked at the haunted house before. If it was Su Wan, she would have locked the door before she left. Looks like an outsider has snuck into the break room. Chen Gu took a detour to the props room to grab Dr. Skullcracker's iron hammer. He pushed the break room door open. The room was dim, and there was no one in sight. Key wasn't on the door frame. As the thief has taken away the key? Chen Gu glanced around the room, and he realized the only difference was there was an unwashed jacket lying on the table. I remember hanging this beside the bed when I changed out of it this morning. Why is it on the table? He turned the light on and used the hammer to peel the jacket back. Underneath the dirty jacket lay a pure white cat. It moved its head with impatience, its pair of different colored eyes shining with resentment. Hingu looked behind it, and a dirty ragdoll was lying on its tail. Small ragdoll appeared like she was trying to grab onto the white cat's tail but she did not expect that Chen Gu would come in so suddenly. Her body froze from the scare, and very instinctively, she pretended to be dead. Xiao Xiao. This scene surprised him. Couldn't these two not stand each other? White cat, jacket. Chen Gu glanced at the jacket, and it dawned on him. When he took the cat to the doctor that night, he used his own jacket to wrap the cat and the kittens. The smell of the four kittens probably lingered on the jacket. The jacket and the basket that carried the kittens were all in the break room, but the room was locked. The key hidden above the doorframe was a secret to most, but for Xiao Xiao, 
who wandered about the haunted house daily, she must have been privy to it. If anything, Xiao Xiao probably knew more about the haunted house than Chen Gu by then. Chen Gu pulled Xiao Xiao up by her leg and shook her twice in the air. A copper key then fell from her pocket. You trying to be the haunted house's manager? Chen Gu did not know to laugh or cry. He placed Xiao Xiao beside the white cat and returned the key to on the door frame. Standing in the cold corridor, Chen Gu felt the break room was weirdly bright and warm. Xiao Xiao lay beside the white cat on the table. Cat gave her a cold shoulder, but it did not push Xiao Xiao aside. It lay lazily on the table and did not seem like anything was going to affect it. Looking at this, Chen Ji's lips curved upwards. I used to stay here alone, but it has gotten quite rowdy now. After closing the door, Chen Gu sat on the chair. He took out the black phone and started to inspect his daily missions. Three missions were respectively to hire more workers, perform safety inspection, and install a sturdy door for the Mu Yang High School scenario. All the missions are imminent problems that the haunted house needs to solve. Chen Gu updated the haunted house's information on the internet by introducing the new scenario and adding in the information of the reward money. After that, Chen Gu posted a recruitment post online. There was only one demand, the person had to be brave. I must be picky with the recruitment. If Uncle Su continues to help me sell ticket, we can still barely manage to get by, so this can be delayed for now. But as the haunted house grows bigger, the issue of security cannot be ignored. I should pick the security option as my daily mission. Chen Gu stood up again. He checked all the safety hazards in the haunted house and came up with new rules, but the black phone did not say that he was done. What's the problem? I've checked all the scenarios, why isn't the mission completed yet? Chen Gu stood there with the black phone. He might need to conduct a three-star trial mission tomorrow, so he needed time to prepare. He had no time to waste on a daily mission. Wait, could it be the mirror in the bathroom? Chapter 148 Nine patients, ten rooms Chen Gu pushed open the bathroom door. The mirror on the wall was covered up by a black cloth, and the cubicle door was sealed up. The visitors come to visit during the day, but the blood door only appears at midnight. Normally, these two parties should not interact, unless someone sneaks into the haunted house at night and accidentally opens the cubicle door, like Zhang Peng. Chen Gu removed the black cloth and stood before the window. He had no clue about the blood world behind the mirror. He did not even know why the door appeared, much less the way to destroy it. My parents once said that the door of the third sick hall has been opened again. This means that it was originally closed. Maybe the third sick hall will have clues to closing the door. Perhaps the door in the mirror and the door of the third sick hall are connected. Then this trial mission will that much more important to me. Ngu waited until midnight and as the second hand passed twelve, the blood door in the mirror appeared on time. In just that one minute, various weird noises came from behind the cubicle. Compared to before, it felt like more things had gathered around the door. Perhaps when I return from the third sick hall, this door will be permanently closed. Chen Gu returned to the staff break room, but he could not sleep. He sat on the chair and wrote down a list of the things he needed to prepare for tomorrow's live stream. A cleaver that has tasted years of blood, a live cock, salt. He worked on the list until 1.50 a.m. Chen Gu still did not feel sleepy. Every few minutes he looked at his watch, and an indescribable anxiety was spreading through him. Still not too safe. The difficulty of the three-star trial mission should be multiple times harder than the two-star Mu Yang High School. Furthermore, I'm going in alone. I have to be more prepared. Chen Gu inspected his life and suddenly his phone rang. Who is calling me at 2 a.m.? Chen Gu glanced at the caller ID and answered it immediately. Dr. Gao? You're looking for me? I'm so sorry to disturb you so late at night, Dr. Gao said politely before cutting straight to the point. I've managed to get Wang Xinglong's medical history from his father, and when I cross-referenced it with our own patient's history, I discovered something weird. What is it? Chen Gu sat up straighter. For Dr. Gao to call him so late at night, it had to be very serious. This Wang Xinglong is more dangerous than he appears. 
In fact, when he was very small, he was involved in a murder. A murder. Ingo could not believe that the chubby kid could have been involved in something so sinister. Listen to me, this case is complicated. There was the sound of typing from the other end of the phone. Xing Long received his first treatment when he was six, and the hospital he received the treatment at was called Jiujiang Third Psychological Convalescent Center. It was a private center. It was far from the city and has been closed five or six years ago. I've heard Wang Hailong mention this hospital before. At the time, they were poor, and the place was close to their old home, so they admitted Wang Xinglong there. But how is that related to the murder? Chen Gu asked. When he was first admitted, Wang Xinglong, who was only six at the time, showcased extreme mood swings. Unable to control himself, he would attack the doctors and family members. No matter how unruly the six-year-old was, he couldn't harm an adult, right? That was what I thought, but the files showed that in one of his crazed moment, he bit off the finger of a fellow patient who shared the same room. I have the picture. Dr. Gao sent over the picture. The gruesome parts were not even censored. Chen Gu glanced at the file. It was a patient's file. Diagnosis on Wang Xinglong was he was extremely dangerous, and the suggested treatment was quarantine and isolation. But that was only the beginning. To ensure the safety of other patients, the doctors quarantined the six years old Wang Xinglong into the third sealed building, and things only got worse from there. Dr. Gao clicked on the screen. He selected the few pages that would not violate the patient's privacy and sent them to Chen Gu. In the second month after Wang Xinglong was moved into the quarantine hall, there was a harrowing murder. A nurse on duty was murdered, and after the police investigation, they confirmed that the murderer wasn't a single person. It felt like all of the patients of the third hall had cooperated to commit this murder. Patients collaborated to kill a nurse. Dr. Gao was revealing information about the third sick hall, and this was all inside information, so Chen Gu paid full attention. Dr. Gao, can you tell me about this case in more detail? That's all I have. I'm a doctor, not the police. Then, can you find more information on the other patients in the third sick hall? Chen Gu wanted to know everything about the third sick hall. Why would you want to know about that? Just curious. Don't worry, I will not leak the information to anyone else. Chen Gu made a few more promises before Dr. Gao finally agreed. There were ten sick bays inside the third sick hall, and there were nine patients. All of them were diagnosed to be extremely dangerous, so they were quarantined for specific treatment. Patient in room one was Wang Xinglong, diagnosed as suffering from happy puppet syndrome or the angel man syndrome. The symptoms include constant smiles, spasms, loss of speech, and mental retardation. He was the youngest at the third sick hall and deemed the least dangerous. Patient in room two was a woman, but the name is blacked out. There is no picture, and there was only an old patient's list. She suffered from heavy depression caused by Dorian Gray syndrome. Her symptoms include over-obsession with her personal image and over-reliance on makeup. She had undergone plenty of plastic surgery and was averse to the natural aging process. In fact, many female celebrities suffer from this. The third patient's room was supposedly empty, and I can't tell whether it housed a patient or not. Chen Gu was suddenly reminded of the note left by his parents. It had specifically pointed out the third room in the third sick hall. Having no records does not mean that it didn't have a patient. You have a point, but the patient's room was arranged according to their danger level, so even if the room was occupied, the patient was not that dangerous. Perhaps this was an error by the hospital. Dr. Gao paused to take a sip of his water before continuing. The patient in room 4 suffered from phantom limb syndrome after losing his arm in an accident. After the amputation surgery, he felt the arm was still on his body and could sense pain and temperature through it. Chapter 149 The most dangerous patient, the man living in room 5, was called Su Tong. He suffered from Fregoli delusion syndrome. He thought that all the people around him were disguised by a similar individual, and he lived in a made-up world. The patient of the room six was called Han Bauer. 
she was a midnight show type of host. There is no picture of her in the files, but her main doctor wrote down this sentence at the bottom of her patient's record. Just how harsh must God be to have made a woman as beautiful as this? Han Bao only stayed at the place for two and a half months before she was taken away. She suffered from a rare disease called body dysmorphic disorder. She had the tendency to exaggerate the imperfections on her body, and she could not accept the slightest flaw. When she was hospitalized, she once tried to chop off her fingers simply because the nails on both hands failed to be symmetrical. The name of the patient in room 7 has been lost, but he suffered from Codert syndrome or the walking corpse syndrome. He believed that he was already a dead man, telling the doctors that his organs had all decayed. He announced to whoever would listen that he had seen the real world and that the reality we are living in isn't real at all. Room 8 had a reinforced steel door, and the patient inside was called Xiong Qin. This patient was once the doctor of the third sick hall. It was believed that his mind snapped after dealing with too many tortured souls. He was diagnosed with hemineglect when he was 30. This type of patient fails to be aware of items to one side of space. When asked to draw the picture of a man, he would miss out the half of the arms and legs. When asked, he said this was the real perfect form. Technically, this disease was not serious, but Xiong Qin was a perfectionist, so when he saw patients with a full set of limbs, he could not control himself from wanting to fix it. The patient in room 9 was called Wu Fei. It was not a clear diagnosis on this patient even when the hospital closed down. Some of the doctors thought that he suffered from Asperger's because he had exceptional memory and superhuman intelligence. Normally, he would not converse with others, perhaps he thought that everyone around him, including his doctor, was too much of a dummy to communicate with. During treatment, he confessed to have done many crazy things, and some of them had involved the police, but after investigation, most of them were faked, and for the real cases, the real murderer had been caught and sentenced. They had nothing to do with Wu Fei. Wu Fei had not hurt anyone when he was hospitalized, but the hospital still decided to lock him in room 9. This was something the hospital and the police decided on after much discussion. According to how the hospital kept their patients, the patient in room 10 should have been the most dangerous, but the patient is not named. I've looked through all the patient's records, and the space for name was only filled with a 10. The doctors never mentioned him by name, and they often referred to him as the devil. This patient suffered from Leshnihan syndrome or juvenile gout. When he acted up, he would use all sorts of equipment available to ruin his own face. His perception of reality was different from normal, and he had a highly destructive tendency. Patient 10 spent most of his time tied to the bed. When he was out, he would be chained to the wheelchair with people looking after him. Actually, those with Leshnihan syndrome rarely live beyond the age of 20, so this patient 10 is probably dead now. Dr. Gao listed the information on all the nine patients, and Chun Gu used a pen to jot everything all down. Looking at the recorded information, Chun Gu felt a chill up his spine. Dr. Gao, do you know what happened to these nine people after they got transferred out of the third sick hall? Other than Wang Xinglong, Su Tong, and Han Bauer, who had records from other hospitals, the rest of them seemed to have disappeared. And do you have ways to contact the three of them? Chun Gu wanted to know more about the third sick hall before starting the live stream. The contact numbers on the files are mostly useless now. So even if I give them you, it'll be pointless, Dr. Gao rejected Chin Gu tactfully. I'm calling you so late at night mainly to tell you that Wang Xinglong might be very dangerous. Mental patients morph into a different person when they act up. Do not purposely go and provoke them. If you are hurt, the law will not be on your side because these people are mentally unhealthy. What Dr. Gao meant was simple. After Chin Gu fell down, he had noticed the carpet was flat so he suspected that Chin Gu did not trip and fall but was pushed by an outside force. He had made this midnight call to warn him of the possible dangers. I understand. I'll be more careful. Chin Gu thought about it before adding, Dr. Gao, if you find out any more information about the third sick hall, please tell me. I'm very interested in that hospital. Your hobby sure is unique. All right then, rest well. I will inform you when I come up with a new development. 
After hanging up, Chin Gu arranged the pieces of paper on the table, his brain mulling over the nine patients. Ten rooms, but nine patients, why? If the rooms are arranged according to their danger level, why did the hospital keep room three empty? Has the room been empty from the very beginning, or was the room left empty for a patient who died in it? Chen Gu did not know when he fell asleep, but when he woke up, it was already morning. Looking at his watch, he saw it was 6 a.m. He washed his face, exited the haunted house, jumped on his bicycle, and headed for the nearest morning market. The market was already busy even though the day was just starting. Chen Gu was quite conspicuous amid the crowd of middle-aged aunties and uncles. He first went to buy a live cock and then went to the stall that sold pork. He stood beside the stall with his eyes open wide. When the proprietor was finally free, he moved forward. Proprietor was a man about forty. He had noticed Chen Gu a long time ago. What do you want? When Chen Gu named his request, he felt weirdly embarrassed. I want to buy your cleaver. You want to buy my cleaver? Man's face fell, thinking that Chen Gu was ridiculing him. I'm serious. Chen Gu placed the money on the counter. Give me a price. After a long explanation, the man finally understood why Chen Gu wanted his cleaver and laughed. It's not that I don't want to sell you this, but nowadays, we have special machine to put the pigs down. You'll need to go to a butcher to find the kind of cleaver you're looking for. After 150, the second lucky draw the middle-aged man also did not know how to respond. He had managed his stall for half his life already, and this was the first time he had come across such a request. If you have nothing else, go. I don't sell the kind of cleaver you want. Then, can you sell me the cleaver you normally use? Chin Gu was determined. Before the live stream, he had to obtain a cleaver regardless of whether it turned out to be useful or not. How am I going to operate this stall if I sell you my cleaver? Middle-aged man just finished when a young man with dyed hair pushed through the crowd. He looked about 19, and his jacket was tied around his waist as he yawned. When the young man appeared, the middle-aged man slammed the cleaver on the cutting board. He wiped his hands on his apron and walked toward the young man. You still know your way back home? Where were you last night? Karaoke with a few friends, then the internet cafe. Young man put on his earphones like he was trying to tune the man out. Then, why didn't you answer your phone? Years of chopping pork meant that the middle-aged man was much more muscular than the young man. He yanked the earphones out directly. I'm talking to you. The young man used his hands to cover up his ears instead. He stood before the middle-aged man and said nothing. Have you gone mute? I'm asking you why you didn't come home yesterday night. Didn't even answer your phone, what were you thinking? The middle-aged man was loud, and the customers even started to persuade him. The young man glared at the middle-aged man before finding an opening to grab the earphones and run out the market. Come back here. The middle-aged man could not chase after him since he had a business to run. He picked up the cleaver and cleaved a bone in half angrily. Looking at how angry he was, Chin Gu very understandably took back his money and left with the chicken. After leaving the market, Chin Gu was looking for his bicycle when he was approached by the young man from earlier. I hear you're looking for a cleaver? Yes, but not a new one. I need one that had been used for a long time already. I have one at home. Follow me, but don't let my father spot us. The young man led Chin Gu to a building near the market. He asked Chin Gu to wait him outside and soon came out with an object wrapped in red cloth. My grandfather was a butcher, and he planned to carry this knife with him to the grave, saying he was not going to let his children do the same job as he did. However, my stubborn dad insisted on keeping the cleaver. From then on, bad luck has followed us. He lost his business, and my mother passed away. In the end, he had to sell pork at the market to make ends meet. The young man gave Chin Gu the cleaver. The cleaver is cursed, so I'm not going to ask for much. Hundred, and it's yours. Chin Gu was intrigued by what the young man said. He pulled the red cloth back and took a close look at the cleaver. 
His yin yang vision twitched like his eyes were pricked by needles. He only recovered several seconds later. The red cloth wrapped around a 40 centimeter long single blade. Perhaps because it had tasted too much fresh blood, the blade was a dark red color. There were grooves running down the blade, and the wooden handle looked like blood veins with lingering red lines. Chin Gu tried the cleaver, and it was heavier than expected. This cleaver sure is unusual. The blade was no longer sharp, but the air around it had not changed. When I was small, I saw my grandfather enter the pig's sty with this cleaver, and none of the pigs dared make a sound. The young man looked at the red cloth and extended his hand toward Chin Gu. You're satisfied, pay up. Not bad, this is the kind of cleaver I'm looking for. Chin Gu passed the young man a hundred and left the young man his phone. If your father asks about the cleaver, tell him to call me. What does this have to do with him? The young man asked emotionlessly and entered the room with the money. Your father is quick with his words and temper, but it must be difficult on him as well. Based on my knowledge, there are no butchers near Jiujiang. To ensure fresh stock, he has to wake up every day at 3 a.m. to get the ingredients from outside of Jiujiang or he might miss the opening of the morning market. With the chicken and cleaver, Chen Gu returned to New Century Park. He still had some time, so Chen Gu looked at the list he had prepared the previous night. A live cock, a cleaver, and salt. I have those already. The three-star mission will be dangerous. If I cannot return safely, all this is pointless. Chen Gu tried to bring as many trump cards as he could. He took out his black phone and scrolled to the very bottom. His eyes landing on the wheel of misfortune. Honestly, he was scarred by this specific feature on the black phone. When I finished the expansion mission, I earned a lucky draw chance. The haunted house has been in business for a while already, and I have collected enough screens to trade for another lucky draw chance. I won't be so unlucky as to get a baleful specter twice, right? Chingu had always stayed away from this kind of game, which depended fully on lucky. If not for the pressure from a three-star mission, he probably would have continued to ignore this function on the black phone. Two chances, perhaps I might really get something that'll save my life. Chen Ji's finger tapped on the screen, and the wheel started to spin. As the wheel spun, Chen Gu clasped his hands together. Please, not another baleful specter. Ding. The needle finally stopped. Congratulations for winning a unique item, the White Valentine's Candy. 7% chance of this appearing when Zhang Ye's affection level has reached, crazy about you. Sincerity, purity, clarity, romance. When you receive this present, your relationship will advance to the next level. White Valentine's candy, the sweet taste dances on your tongue. When you finish the candy, Zhang Ye will appear. You have received the present Zhang Ye was unable to gift when she was still alive. Zhang Ye's affection toward you has increased slightly. Chen Gu had a bad feeling in his heart. He sat on the steps. I've received the present Zhang Ye was unable to gift when she was still alive. Goodness, this sounds so weird. Draft blew against Chen Ji's neck, and he turned back to see a candy package was sitting behind him. The design of the bag was similar to the one Chen Gu had found in the dance studio at Western Zhejiang's private academy. He opened it, and there was one piece of white candy inside. Weirdly enough, the candy had the face of a crying girl on it. This face looks like one of Zhang Ye's roommates. Don't tell me she has made one of her roommates into candy. Putting the candy back into the bag, Chen Gu felt like he needed to evaluate his situation. Even though I didn't get a baleful specter, it is still related to one. Is it because I'm close to the haunted house that I keep getting this weird stuff? He patted the dust on his body as he stood up. He washed his face, placed the chicken in the room, and then left New Century Park on the bicycle. According to the introduction on the black phone, there are many kinds of rewards I can get from the lucky draw. In terms of probability, it's about time I get something good. Chin Gu stood before the rising sun and tapped on the screen. The wheel turned rapidly and stopped after a few seconds. What is it? Sun fell on Chen Gu, gilding him. Congratulations for winning a rare item, the crying tape, 
3% chance of winning. When he played the tape for the first time, he realized that something was wrong. The empty tape was filled with white noise that could not be erased. He tried every method to remove the white noise, and he heard the sound he made before he died. Lucky Spectres favored, you have won another rare Baleful Spectre. Note, after winning five Baleful Spectres, the title of Spectres favored will be upgraded. Chinga sat on the roadside with a cigarette dangling on his lips. Looking at New Century Park, which was 3,000 meters away, he sighed. I shouldn't have wasted my energy to come so far.